old school motorcycles. Yes, they have a funny effect on us, don't they? We have a tendency to reminisce on specific brands and timelines that made a huge impact on us. Well, guys, call it a day. What a day! Hey, boss, get some fingerprints, huh? Wait. <laughs> Very green. ZRX 1200 Kawasaki, yeah. It's it is very a green. stunner, isn't it? Yeah, that's nice. This is a motorcycle designed specifically or targeted towards fans of the world superbike champion, Eddie Lawson. To this day, it still holds a great deal of heritage without being stamped with a ridiculous price tag. It's called the ZRX 1200R. It was an evolutionary step from the old 1100 series and made its debut in Japan back in 2001 and sold to the American market back in 2005. Although it wasn't the first generation motorcycle to replicate this formidable American hero, it was the most powerful replica ever made. Well, thus far. It even earned itself the nickname Gruntmeister. It's embodied with the mighty ZZR1200's thumping heart. This water-cooled 1165cc power plant throws down an astonishing 112 new meters at just 7,000 RPM and powers through with 122 ponies at 8,500 RPM. This big green is a formidable opponent against its big muscle brute rivals such as Suzuki's Torque GSX1400. Honda's sporty handling CB1300 and Yamaha's XJR 1300 Grunter. But unlike its rivals, the ZRX possesses a stronger, stylish legacy. From its bucket shaped head that could possibly put our Australian outlaw Ned Kelly to shame to its flared out ducktail rear end, the Kawasaki's presence certainly has a nasty habit of kicking you in the face with more nostalgic flair than the others. But its exterior isn't the only thing keeping it old school. Unlike the other Japanese big bull muscle bound machines, Kawasaki has decided to dedicate themselves to using and strictly using a carbureted system instead of fuel injection. Whether or not it was bestowed upon Kawasaki to strategically use a carbureted system as a nostalgic marketing tool to getting those pleasant mind fart clouds out of the brains of those living in the past and into their wallets, the thing is, if you're going to make it look the part, it's got to feel the part. Any beat up old timer that's been riding since the dawn of the first wheel will tell you that the old carby systems are the way to go. They deliver a unique soulful touch between the rider and his ride. And that bastardized fuel injection system flatlines the heartbeat of any engine. It's fucking sacrilege. Well, that's what I'd imagine that they'd say. True or not, the carbureted system is the dinosaur tech of fuel feeding combustion. Now that I think about it, its nickname, the Rex, seems quite fitting. But don't think for one second a carbureted system makes it insufficient in terms of power delivery. Forget that it ain't fuel injected. Big Green packs a mighty punch of power down low and continues to pull strong to its maximum rev range. In fact, out of all the other big bore fours, she holds the most horses when it comes to a pissing contest. Now horses of course don't mean everything on a piece of paper. Don't get me wrong, the ZRX certainly is an exhilarating crutch rocket to get you flying. But in all honesty, the Suzuki's GSX 1400 will deliver a bigger kick up the arse. With its bottom end delivery, you won't need to see your family GP for a prostate exam for many years to come. But where the ZRX shines the brightest against the Suzuki's muscular physique, is the handling and maneuverability. Hey, 
this doesn't handle like a traditional muscle bike. If anything, it's more like a street fighter. It feels so nice and nimble through the bends. Nice progressive feel. Applying the front brakes. Now for old six pop brakes up front, they actually pull up pretty well. Full pegs do sit reasonably high compared to that of the 1400, which certainly inspires to take corners a little bit harder. Tell you what, this bike handles exceptionally well if you start taking things really smoothly and you're not being too aggressive on the throttle. This certainly handles a lot better than that of the other big three Japanese big boars. Sure, the ZRX is set up on the same principles with the other big fours like twin rear shocks, a double cradle steel frame, and conventional cartridge front forks. However, Kawasaki decided to one up from the others, and surprisingly, a simple change can impact a significant difference in handling by giving it a wider set of handlebars. Wider handlebars offer better precision in order to maneuver through the bends when transferring weight and input from the hands to the front wheel. Whilst you have to move the handlebars a little more to make it go in a certain direction, and yeah, you require more rotation than narrow bars, but by using the push method, it isn't as daunting and demands more load energy for the rider to make the slightest adjustment through the bends. Plus, there's the benefit of riding long distance. Wider handlebars will absorb the majority of the force when riding over shitty roads with piss poor maintenance. Therefore, allowing the rider to feel a little more relaxed than being a smacked up snake getting the piss beaten out of it. Look at that little bastard go. Get him, bastard. Get him. So going back to our last review on the Notorious GSX 1400, if you haven't watched it already, there is a link in the description below, so make sure to check that out. There are three key elements that the Big Green has over Suzuki's Muscular Beast. Firstly would have to be the suspension setup. It is without a doubt chalk and cheese in comparison to the GSX 1400. The KYB rear shocks don't bounce around like a $20 prostitute sitting in the back of your car. Don't ask how I know. And then we come to the front brakes. We have a nice progressive feel as we're applying, unlike those wooden paddle sticks that we get on the 1400. And thirdly would have to be the seats. Yes, I did praise the 1400 for being relatively comfortable, but in all honesty, after half an hour of riding, the stuffing felt like it was jam-packed full of well-used raggedy handles. Yep. There are a lot of great things to say about the ZRX 1200R. Despite it claiming 223 kilos dry, its weight seems to be pretty well balanced from front to rear. At no point did I find myself wanting to steady up coming down the twisty road. The riding position is ever so slightly aggressive. You'll find your upper body bent forward as opposed from being completely upright. But it's nothing really to be upset about. It's perfectly manageable. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Well. I wouldn't say it's perfect. Now the instrument clusters I do have a slight issue with. When you're riding in the middle of the afternoon the indicator bulbs are very difficult to see especially when the sun is like projecting straight onto that dash. You don't even know if you've left the indicators on or not. Like now yeah, I, I can't even see oh, I can't even see <laughs> should focus on the road. I can't even see what the hell if the indicator is on or not. So in all honesty those uh, instruments for the lights and hot well for the indicators and the high beam should probably be placed at the top here so at least that way you're casting a bit of a shadow and you can get that um, ambient light flashing in your face a little bit better and it's good that it has a fuel gauge on there it also has a clock which doesn't seem to work it seems to be stuck just after five o'clock or maybe it's just indicating that it's a time to ride i mean every time's a time to ride but what would have been good there up the top is a temperature gauge that's the one thing that this bike is lacking. That and a gear indicator. Here you are, rolling onto the highway, clicking through the gears. You're maintaining the speed limit, but you come to notice that the bike is revving a little much on the highway. So you go for another gear and what happens? Nah, that's all she wrote, mate. She's got nothing else to give. Bloody gears. 
Oh, listen here, you bloody pricks. Give me another bloody gear to work with here. I've got a 19-litre tin can, and I might be lucky enough to see 250 kilometres before she enters the red zone. Give me another gear. Go on, do it. You bloody freeloathing bastards. Add some injectors while you're at it, too. And so Kazaki set off on a wondrous journey to fulfill what was requested. Unfortunately, this revamp model was only available for purchase in the Japanese market in 2008. Look, if I'm going to be completely honest here, taking all the other positives into consideration that the Rex has to offer, and you won't be worrying about those minor issues if you're considering sticking this bad boy into your shed. A lot of ZRX owners are pretty chuffed with their big classic retro machine. From its timeless, iconic style that really reflects the golden era of the big bore machines, and its incredible handling for a heavyweight. It presents a great riding experience for anyone short-legged or large in stature without discomfort. Plus I should mention that there is a massive selection of aftermarket parts you can purchase to really make this Kawasaki stand out from the crowd. There's no doubt in my mind for a secondhand purchase, you'll be grinning ear to ear. They are an absolute bargain for what they are. And you won't come short when you're considering palming it off for a resale. If anything, you might gain a couple of pineapples in your wallet. But if the styling is something you are not completely fond of, well, you may want to take a gander at the direct competition. These two motorcycles are very much a close second to the ZRX 1200R. The Honda CB1300S and the XJR1300. Well, that concludes our video presentation of the ZRX 1200R. The more shares and likes we get on our videos helps our channel to grow and providing sufficient funding to help develop more videos for your viewing pleasures. So if you have any more questions or more information you'd like to share with us, be sure to leave a comment below. So stay tuned for more big bore motorcycles rolling into our channel. I promise you won't be disappointed. And as always, my fellow riders, get on your two wheels and free the soul. Thanks for watching. Mate, that box is bigger than Lindsay Lohan in Paris Hilton.